Okay, here's almost the finished project. I decided to forge ahead here. Uh, unfortunately, there's no real good way to mount this compressor <laughs> to the top of this thing, so I ended up just using cable ties. But to be honest with you, it's not going anywhere. I lost my tools. Can you believe it? Ladies and gentlemen, this table is going to collapse in a second. But anyway, <laughs> I'll work on that after I get it cleared off. I'll cut the wires, splice everything together here. Uh, the brown wire is the original wire that came into the dehumidifier when it was such. Black wire here, switched through the pressure switch. Taps off, goes to the hot wire of the compressor. And the other wire goes to the light over here. And the white wire, everything just ties together. The black is just the other black of this light again because that's what color it was. And uh, everything's all there. And it is time for its maiden voyage. So, I'll just try to grab everything and plug it in. See if we could put the light somewhere where you could see it. Probably can't see it too well, but I'll see if I can get the plug set. So it'll plug in, almost. There. So you can see it's on. I just bent this down. I didn't really have to bend it too, too crazy, so everything just worked. I do have to put a clamp on that still. It may, in fact, blow off as we test now. Hopefully not, but... It's there, it's mounted, it's running. The light works. Wires are need to be cable tied. I mean, um, wire nutted. I should insulate that. I'll put some uh, heat shrink tubing on it. I guess I have. And uh, the light is on. Funny how the camera makes it look not as on as it really is, but that's what it looks like. Not terribly quiet, but not terribly loud. You can kind of sort of carry it as a handle here even though you shouldn't. You just pick the whole thing up. In fact, you could kind of use that as a handle if you wanted, although it's kind of tight. And the other problem is the compressor gets hot. Pretty hot at that. So we're just going to let this fill up and let the switch cut out to make sure that my wiring is correct and the light goes out. And from what it looks like, it should. I also thought about just shearing this off right here on the suction line, just so nothing gets in there. But of course, that's what the other tools are for. Just do that, <laughs> keep shit from getting in it. Uh, it's just easier to add oil to it this way by just keeping it up. But I guess, uh, there we go, it's shut. Lights out and it will not restart when I empty it until it's completely empty and then maybe not even and then it's a whole pain in the dick. Smoking like crazy as usual. I lost my tools. I tried to restart. The light is showing it should be on, but of course that ain't gonna happen. It's showing it should be on, but the lockout is on on the compressor. and she restarted. So, if I ever get an unloader valve, it will work as a proper compressor, but there she be, the Fakakta Compressor 2000. <laughs> I don't know, maybe 2003, I think is when I got this tank. I have no idea, I don't even remember anymore. It's probably a date code on it, but whatever. So, that's it. She's all done, and that's kind of what it looks like. Again, I just got to clean up the wiring and that. And then uh, throw it in the garage and never use it. <laughs> all right, take care. All right, here's pretty much the finished product. I think I wanted to just uh, put one more cable tie and just kind of cable tie that up nice, you know, in there or some crap like that. But uh, I put the ground wire on the tank. Tuck the wires in, heat shrink that, 
The other one was actually original from the dehumidifier. Shove the light in there just for shits and giggles. And we'll do one final run up of it. Just put that down. And she's on. It's not fast, it's not slow. I honestly don't remember how long the original compressor that was on this tank took <laughs> to fill it up, but anyway, this is the final run up of it, and then it's gonna go in a corner in the garage, like I said. Put a clamp on there. You know, so everything's just nicey nice. Uh, there's still no real handle, but you could just stick your hand under each side and carry it like that, or if you wanted, you can kind of carry it by these. I also want to just clean it up, but, you know, it doesn't really matter because it's a piece of shit anyway. It's just something to cobble together for something to do on a Saturday afternoon. We're at 50 PSI. If uh, anybody knows where I can get a replacement check valve, for this. This is a rubber hose that has braided shit on it and it goes down into whatever size fitting that is. I have no idea. And apparently there's a check valve in there and that check valve was not doing too well, which may have led to the original compressor's demise. I just don't know. But uh, anyway, if I were to replace that, then I'm sure we would have a lot less head pressure on this because if I hit it at just the right time, if I pop the valve as soon as it hits the shutoff and it goes right down to 75 without a chance for anything to bleed back and leak back through into the compressor, it starts right back up. And I think we'll try that just for shits. See if I can catch it in time. You can also watch, I gotta do this as soon as the light goes out, as soon as it shuts. And there you go. It's back on, it's running. So if you wait, if, you know, if you don't wait, then it doesn't have a chance to leak enough back uh, into uh, the compressor and then all that kind of stuff. Uh, the other thing, because it's leaking back, is it produces a nice little smoke stream and makes gurgly sounds. It will actually start throwing up oil and shit, oil and water, because this compressor, while it does work, the air is pretty hot, because that tube is real hot going in there. And as you compress air, it gets cold. So that means that we're gonna have a lot of condensate in the tank. See, now that it shuts, there you go. That's it all blowing back. If I put my finger on it, you can see that it builds up pressure. And it smells like death, I think. I'm not sure, it's probably not good to breathe that, but I think it's atomized oil of some kind because there's oil slicks and spots all over this thing now from it throwing up oil from that. Um, that's pretty much it. If I do drain it enough for it to even that, it can't start. And that's it. And now what I have to do is run it all the way down says on because that pressure switch says on and as soon as the compressor cutout kicks back in it'll restart I'll just hold the valve in case anytime and it restarts and everything's fine it'll fill right back up so anyway, it's all because of that Fakakta little check valve. So again, if anybody knows where to get one of those, that would be great just to, you know, send me one. That would be even better because it doesn't pay to put any money in this because I had the shrink tubing, I had the wire nuts, I had the compressor, I had the clamp, I had the tank, I had the cord, <laughs> I had all the parts. So. This was a no-cost project because I had everything already. And uh, that was it, I got to use my little ratchet and all kinds of other shit. 
kind of the other shed in addition to my rat shed. Anyway, that's it. That's the uh, silent compressor that's not terribly silent. The fill is uh, certainly uh, where a lot of the noise comes from, but that's just how it's going to be. So I guess I'll leave it with a little chucher up like that for now so it doesn't throw up oil all over the place as bad. Because if we're just down, it would just shit all over itself and rot out that rubber hose and all kinds of great shit. We'll just wait till it shuts off and then we'll cut it there, I guess. And that's it. All right, let me know if anybody knows where to get all that kind of great shit. And uh, thanks again for watching. Take care.